tough are you? We're hanging out at the Whistler Tough Mudder to see just what it takes to tackle this course. Then we're heading down Highway 99 to explore the Britannia Mine Museum. And finally, we'll enjoy the sweet sounds of Musical Musical. Stick around, it's all local, and it's all on this episode of Go See to Sky. Welcome to Go See the Sky only on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Heather Butts, hanging out at the 2014 Tough Mudder course at Whistler Olympic Park. This rugged obstacle course is filled with many attractions that people seem to want to tackle, and we'll have all the details for you later in the show. First, we're heading down Highway 99 to the Britannia Mine Museum. First opened in 1904, it was in operation for 70 years. Many years later, it was deemed a historic site and is one of the most popular attractions in our corridor. The Britannia Mine Museum is now celebrating 110 years of discoveries and they're hosting special events and exhibits throughout the summer. Here's a look at what you can discover when you head underground. Imagine a time when these tools were new and when this mine was bustling with workers. When you tour the Britannia Mine Museum, you don't have to dream it, you can live it. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Heather. Hi, thanks for having me oh, to the museum. Oh, I'm so excited that you came to visit. I'm very excited. You guys are celebrating 110 years. We are. 110 years of discovery in Britannia Beach and the museum has lots of activities for you to explore and our guests this summer. First opened in 1904, it appears time is at a standstill at this authentic museum sprawling with history. Well, this is the Beatty Lundin Visitor Centre and in this building we have a number of exhibits that put mining in context. Tools of the trade help share what it was like to be a miner, some more hands-on than others. <laughs> Heather, in here we have our modern mining exhibits. It's an opportunity for people to discover modern mining in context. It's an important first stop on your trip through time. This exhibit helps brighten the often dim subject. The fact is, is if you don't grow it, you must mine it, and you cannot imagine a world without mining. And you just have to think about that for a moment to know that's true. Once outside, you'll explore 18 buildings and historic sites in their original place. Each played a significant role in the operation of one of the largest copper-producing mines of the British Commonwealth in the 1920s and 30s. Heading into the conveyor shed, you'll discover a collection of 110 historic photos, a new exhibit to mark this year's milestone. In 70 years of operation, the Britannia Mine had 60,000 people that called it home. And so you can imagine there's lots of stories. From there, we climb the stairs to the most popular attraction. All right. Hi guys, welcome. Hi. Hi. Hard hats for the Thanks tour. Very much. Hard hats on, we're ready to go. We board the train and prepare to head deep into the mine. Okay ladies, hard hats on at all times. Hands and feet inside the train at all times. And please feel free to ask questions whenever you'd like. Rolling through the authentic 1912 tunnel, it's chilly and damp. Signs of copper still in the walls, there's no doubt this is the real deal. All right, ladies, so that is the end of our train ride. If I could have you both exit to the right-hand side of the train. The adventure far from over, we're guided to the drilling chamber where our interpreter explains tools used in the tunnel, complete with a loud demonstration. In a one eight hour shift, they would be mandated to drill 30 to 35 holes. After they were done that, they would selectively fill these holes with dynamite, hop on the train, light the fuse, and hope that no one was left underground. <laughs> All right, ladies, come on down. I'm going to be explaining this machine first and foremost. The tour of the mine is expansive, complete with several different demonstrations. Nothing is left to the imagination. From there, you'll head indoors to explore what lies behind the walls of this famous 20-story structure. All right, ladies, so welcome to mill number three, an engineering masterpiece for its time, as you can see. So this building has a grand total of 376 stairs. Catching a glimpse of what took place within this historic site, the experience is eye-opening and important to understand. It's a part of our history that gives people insight into how province and country was built. Um, it's a real authentic place. 
As the museum celebrates 110 years, there's sure to be something for you to discover on your adventure through time. Well, that train ride into the mine was my favorite part. It's worth the trip to Britannia. Their special exhibits run for the full year, but the big events are only happening in the summer with a few special ones on Canada Day. Be sure to check their website for details. If you're looking for something else to do, why not head to your local farmer's market? If you're visiting the Whistler Farmer's Market, be sure to check out Nico beads. You'll want to see these beautiful glass beads and how they're made. You'll find Nicola Griffiths in her shop on wheels. Have a look. It's really interesting and fun to do. Working with glass is just awesome because it just changes. It's fun to work with really. Using a hot torch and a glass rod, Nicola Griffiths works to create one of her favorite winter beads, a snowman. I'm very lucky to be able to make things just tiny, detailed. My beads are very detailed and a lot of care goes into them. Detailed is an understatement. Griffith's intricate beads are unique in their shape, colors and of course size. The process of flame working requires a steady hand, a creative mind and plenty of patience. All reasons why this ski instructor originally from England took up the craft just a few years ago. I saw someone doing it and I thought, well, I'd really like to try that. And I think I'd be good at it because I've got lots of patience. I love art. Encouraged by her artistic parents, Griffith spent several summers honing her skills in their garage on the Isle of Man. Soon after, Nico Beads was formed and this young artist was selling her work at markets both here in Whistler and abroad. But gaining her Canadian residency and settling into Whistler full-time would add another challenge to her delicate work. Then I had to find a workshop. Yeah, that was a difficult thing because most properties here are rentals and nobody's very happy for you to have an open flame inside their wooden cabin. So it was quite difficult. It was suggested she could set up shop in a van, and that's exactly what she did, complete with shelving, a spacious work area, and a ventilation system. Rich with character, the mobile workshop can go anywhere. It was brilliant, it was just perfect, because it's, it's high up, um, you can walk around in it, it's got skylights. The open door allows for easy demonstrations at local markets, offering customers a first-hand glimpse of how a simple glass rod can be melted and transformed into a beautiful bead within minutes. Plus, an open door policy means several suggestions. I tried to make every animal that I could think of. Plus, children come and they watch me do the demonstrations and I ask them to think of some inspiration. So children give me lots of ideas. Making sure not to heat the glass too quickly, otherwise it will spark, Griffiths delicately turns her stick while strategically choosing different colors. Melting each glass rod ever so slightly, she adds a unique tone to her most famous creation, the Whistler bead, infused with the colors of a Whistler summer. So it's got the blues for the lakes, and then it's got a bit of mountain, and then it's got some like gold glitter and then it's got the sunset and the sky. So it's got quite a lot of colors in one bead. The initial request came from a customer, but this artist found much of her inspiration in the landscapes that surround her. I just see beauty in glass, and Whistle's a beautiful place to live. So I get lots of inspiration here. Nicola's beads are spectacular. If you're visiting the area or perhaps you're a local, the Whistler bead is a nice little keepsake. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Go See the Sky. If you'd like to see one of our stories or perhaps our full show again, everything is available for you online in HD. Just visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go See the Sky, we're your local voice. Coming up. You need the art to develop that other side of the brain. They can sing, dance, and act. We preview the rising stars of Whistler and Pemberton.
following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today. It's time to party cause it's Canada Day. No need to work cause it's a holiday. July the 1st we should all celebrate. Wake up early and stay up late. Canada, 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 Canada. Welcome back to Go See the Sky, only on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Heather Butts, hanging out at the 2014 Tough Mudder at Whistler Olympic Park. This course is rough and rugged and we'll have all the event details for you coming up in the show. First, it's time for this week's episode of Big Summer. Thanks to the popularity of the Hunger Games franchise, people all over the world are trying their hand at archery. In Kamloops, the club is bigger than ever and they're encouraging everyone to try their hand at this ancient art. It requires a good eye, a steady hand, and a little bit of luck. Hoping it will, crossing my fingers. Here at the Kamloops Archery Range, on Thursday nights you can work on your skills or just master the basics, all while sharing a few laughs with friends. Yes! That was me! That's me! The part of the club I like the most is the social, is the social aspect. Um, we always have a, a good laugh with uh, all our friends. Mark and Katie moved from the UK about two years ago and became directors at the Kamloops Target Sports Association. Passionate about the outdoors, the two have made it their mission to share their love of archery with anyone who's willing to try. We have everyone from serious competitors and hunters and right through to families coming together and old and young, uh, men and women. Um, yeah, there's all all kinds of people and we, we, you know, we try really hard to keep it that way. Parents inquire about um, archery for their kids and they'll come along and realise they can do it together as a family. Valerie first picked up a bow in college. Now, after a short 40-year hiatus, she's back doing something she really loves to do. I like the outdoorness of it. I like it's, it's an old medieval sport, so that's kind of what I like is the, the um, yeah, going back to, you know, I kind of want to feel like a warrior. I don't know. And I'm retired, so I wanted to meet kind of new people and do different things. So, yeah, checked it off my bucket list, and I'm hooked. It's also a very social kind of activity because you can talk to your friends while doing it, unlike some other running activities that you <laughs> My daughter read The Hunger Games. She was really keen, which I think is pretty common. And uh, we came out, and we all tried it and liked it and thought it would be a great family activity. From a fun and casual family activity to a pretty serious hobby, archery attracts people with varying expertise. I'm pretty amateur. I probably get like three out of ten arrows bullseye. And really, all you need to get started is essentially just a bent stick. So whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just getting started, archery in Kamloops is one of the best ways to kick off summer. For more information on how you can get involved, visit OutsiderAdventures.com or KTSA.ca. For Shaw TV's Big Summer in Kamloops, BC, I'm Sam Numpson. Well, that 
looks like fun. Definitely something for you to try if you find yourself near Kamloops this summer. If you're looking for something for your kids to do, perhaps a little closer to home, why not get them involved in the arts? Acting, singing and dancing, this builds confidence for children both on and off stage. We met up with the young rising stars of LB Productions as they showed their skills during their spring performance of Musical Musical. Stepping on stage and into character, these young actors explore a world outside of their own realm. I have a twin sister and we are the oldest children of the king. Musical Musical is an original script written and produced by LB Productions. Teens failing to enjoy anything but video games are guided by a phantom on an adventure through some of the classic musicals of our time, including Fiddler on the Roof, West Side Story, and The King and I. It's fun because um, you get to have a lot of fun in, in it, and um, we always laugh because someone always messes up and is like, you hooligans! It's time you learn your vast respect for your vast heritage of musical theater. <laughs> <laughs> These young actors from Pemberton and Whistler participate in a variety of small acting, singing, and improv classes, but together they produce one large scale production. I play basically a jock who just hangs around with the stereotypical type of characters. Sure, check Netflix. Uh, I've seen everything on Netflix. You could call them a triple threat. The emerging artists can all act, sing, and dance. Skills that stand out under the stage lights, but continue to shine once they step out of character. It helps me feel more comfortable in like uh, large groups. Before I was kind of shy-ish, like a, I didn't feel comfortable. Now I'm confident, because you know, a uh, stage with like 100 people doesn't bother me anymore. That is music to the ears for director Anita Burleson. The majority of people are not going to go on and do professional theatre or anything like that, but everyone's going to have to get up in front of a group and speak sometime. Everyone's going to have to have the confidence to go to a job interview, so it's a benefit to everyone. The arts have become so popular in this mountain town, LB Productions is now offering summer film classes, giving young stars another opportunity to express their creativity. There is a ton of talent in Whistler and, and people are hungry, parents are hungry, kids are hungry because it's a sporty town, a successfully sporty town, but you need the arts, it develops that other side of the brain, right? They may still be actors in training, but many already know one important part, to be proud of their performance. I just like to look back at myself and say, hey, I did that. Now those kids have talent. If you want more information about LB Productions and its new upcoming summer film camps, visit lbpentertainment.com. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Go See the Sky. We'd love to hear from you. Perhaps you have a story idea or an event you'd like us to cover. Get in touch with us at facebook.com slash go see to sky. Later in the show, Cup Hunter is a great time, it's a ton of fun, it's a true test of your fitness. We see what it takes to get down and dirty at Whistler's Tough Mudder. When he was only 16, Richard Pierpoint was enslaved in Senegal and taken to America. All us men have sworn on this petition to fight. You're an old man. The British Army has militias and trained soldiers. I fought with the British during the American Revolution. Take your land and farm it. Leave the Americans to us. With respect, sir. I was born a free man, and I intend to die one. Your officers fight for land and money. 
I fight for my freedom. Richard Pierpoint was one of thousands of black loyalists who won their freedom in the American Revolution. 30 years later, at the age of 68, he petitioned for an all-black unit that would defend Upper Canada during the War of 1812. The Reebok Spartan Race, a series of obstacle courses that has taken place in more than 60 countries around the world. It's coming this summer to communities in BC and Alberta. For more information on the race and how you can participate, visit them online at SpartanRace.com. Welcome back to Go See the Sky, only on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Heather Butts, at the 2014 Tough Mudder at Whistler Olympic Park. This course is not for the faint of heart, and we'll tell you why in just a few minutes. First, it's time for this week's edition of Go Style. Vancouver has some innovators when it comes to sportswear, and it's not just the big brands. Our Aaron Shaw is going local and exploring brands that pack a punch, developed just down the highway in Vancouver. For Vancouverites, athletic wear is a uniform in and out of the gym, and local designers are offering alternatives to big brands. Well, I think what's great is that this market has really been dominated by a lot of really large retailers, and so what's great is that we have all these smaller retailers that are going into the market, but they take more of a fashion-forward approach. Dobbin Design is one of these brands. What's great about Dobbin Design is that they've added this really unique quality by hand tie-dyeing all their garments. There's nothing worse than going to a yoga studio and seeing someone wearing the exact same thing that you're wearing. So by tie-dyeing their garments, every single piece is going to be individual. So you and your friend can buy the same idea, but it's going to be represented a lot differently and it's going to look differently on every person. Our line is definitely focused on active wear, but a main component for it is that you can also wear it out. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's our seamless underwear. It's really cute in terms of its cut and its fit, and also the fabric is thick enough that you can wear it as a bikini bottom, so it is multifunctional. So there are some brands out there that are really embracing the technology and claiming that there's health benefits from actually wearing yoga wear. Including Firma Energy Wear. It has bioactive minerals in it. When your body emits heat and the fabric, because of the bioactive crystals and minerals inside of it, emits far infrared energy back into the body so it also helps regulate core body temperatures because it really helps in muscle recovery. For women it helps with cellulite, helps just really get the skin looking more toned. The yarn itself contains the minerals rather than it being a coating, meaning that the health benefits they are claiming can't be washed away in the laundry. And then there's Chickum, which adds small touches that take the line beyond the gym. Little details like the flounce across the front of the bust is also great because you can walk out of the yoga studio, but not look like you just walked out of a yoga studio. Looks like Vancouverites have some choices to make. I'm Erin Shaw for Ghost Style. Well, it's nice to know you can be stylish and comfortable at the same time, but some of those outfits looked pretty fancy. I'm not sure there's something you'd wear if you're competing in Tough Mudder. This event here at Whistler Olympic Park draws thousands of people, all who want to see if they're tough enough to complete this course. So, just how tough is it? Let's go find out. It's a gritty combination of rocky natural terrain and treacherous man-made features. It's a tough course and a big challenge. Tough Mudder is a great time, it's a ton of fun, it's a true test of your fitness. Guts, glory and determination, that is what it takes to complete a rugged 19 kilometer trail with grueling obstacles along the way. Just finished and I feel relieved. I was on a bucket list, so I did it. I, uh, I've never jumped in 10 feet of water before in my life and did it today, so it was a good, it was a good day. I'm 32, and today was my first time jumping from 10 feet, so pathetic but good. Whistler Olympic Park has already tested some of the world's most fierce athletes, but this is a test of sheer willpower and determination. Battling through the electroshock therapy obstacle, Tom Fast crossed the finish line at 2 hours 15 minutes, earning his orange as a tough mutter. I was worried about the Arctic enema, but you, you're all jacked up, ready to go. It, it wasn't nearly as cold as I thought it would be. And but I was going with my buddy, so he led the way, and I, I, can't, I can't fall behind. So that's all the motivation I needed, and it didn't really phase me. 
Each obstacle forces competitors to dig deep and find the drive they need to conquer the task at hand. Many face their fears as they walk the plank, plunging more than 10 feet into a pool of water. Other obstacles require the strength of a teammate to help breach the glory blades. I was very tired, but my best friend Tommy kept me motivated. I just kept pace with him and it was, yeah, doing it with him was, it was what made it well. The intensity is fierce and the 19 obstacles are harsh. Most people take three to four hours to complete the demanding course. I love the abuse. <laughs> Really, it's, it's all about the abuse. 15,000 people endured the Whistler Tough Mudder. Many did so in groups big and small, and that included a team from Shaw, calling themselves the Schmutters. I'm here with my team, I'm here with my company, and we're going to have some fun times today. You know, what we're going to do today is really challenge ourselves, a lot like our company. You know, we're always transitioning, we're always here to challenge ourselves and step ourselves to the next level. Whether they train all year to complete the excruciating course in record time or simply compete for fun, all leave with bragging rights of having crossed the finish line. Well, I won't be signing up for Tough Mudder anytime soon, but it was a spectacular event to watch. Congratulations to all the participants. I think you're considered tough just for signing up. Well, that does it for this episode of Go See to Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. The Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission, the CRTC, is the public authority that regulates and supervises the broadcasting system in Canada. The CRTC will hold a public hearing beginning on September 8, 2014 in the National Capital Region on the future of television. Join the conversation today. Tell the CRTC how we can make sure your TV system meets your current and future needs. Submit your comments by June 25, 2014. Find out how on the CRTC website at crtc.gc.ca slash talktv or contact the CRTC toll-free 1-877-249-CRTC or TTY 1-877-909-CRTC. It's important to make your voice heard on the future of television in Canada. Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. 
you can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice.